So let's start with a cervical vertebrae. So that is a, oh, that's a terrible one, isn't it? That's all broken. Let's look at this one. It's a little broken, but that is a cervical vertebrae. How can you tell that is a cervical vertebrae? Well, a couple ways you can tell. Number one is you have a hole right there. That's a transverse foramen. That one's a little broken, uh, but nevertheless, there's a hole there. Also, look at the bifid spinous process. It's got a double little back on it here, kind of a split tail. Um, so that's definitely cervical. There's no other vertebrae that looks like that. And plus, it's pretty small. And if you want to if we want to keep on looking at weirdness, if we look down at this angle, we can see the little, call them little Batman ears here and there. Okay, those are called the uncinate processes, and they make up the joints of von Luschka, the German guy who discovered them. Those aren't very great ones. Let's see if I can see a better one here. Oh, this looks better. Okay, now you can see the little Batman air sticking up. So those are called the uncinate processes of the joints of von Luschka. While we're looking in this angle, we can see the vertebral body. Um, so vertebral body is right here. And what else can we see? We can see a transverse process. Actually, it's a, if I turn it your way a little bit, it's double strutted. We have an anterior strut, posterior strut or you can call those bars. We have some bone right here connecting these two. That's called the intertubercular lamellae here. We can see the transverse foramen really nicely right there. This is nice right here. What's that? That's pedicle. Pedicle connecting the vertebra body to the vertebra arch, which is this whole thing. So let's see, what is the vertebral arch made up of? Well, lamina is right here. Spinous process, lamina on the other side. And then we have these articular pillars. I guess I could turn it back to the side to show you that. And so it, it looks like a pillar. This whole thing is the articular pillar. And the top part of it is the superior articular process. The bottom part is the inferior articular process. If I flip it over, we can see those little pads right there. Uh, that's the facet of the inferior articular process, facet of the superior, or this is the other facet of the other inferior articular process, transverse foramen. You can see the anterior bar or anterior strut quite nicely right there. Those holes are not supposed to be there. That's just where wires went to join these together. You can see a nice vertebra foramen where the spinal cord goes. Uh, you can see the lamina quite nicely here and here. This is spinous process property in the middle, bifid spinous process. And what else? It's not too terribly complicated, I don't think. And I think we got it all. There's tubercles. Let me see if I can find one less. Yeah, I really can't. Most of the tubercles are kind of hard to see. Uh, but in this view, and hopefully this is focusing, uh, we have anterior tubercle, posterior tubercle. The piece in the middle is the intertubercular lamellae. Let me drop that down just in case it's not focusing for whatever reason because now my glass is off, everything looks a little blurry. Anterior tubercle, transverse process. Posterior tubercle, transverse process. Intertubercular lamellae is in the middle. Pedicle is right here. And yeah, that's about the story with the, what do you make of that? Hmm, is it a cervical? They're kind of like this, maybe you can tell. This is the one from the lecture slides. Well, it doesn't have the 
the bifid spinous process. It's got a straight, big, long spinous process. How can you tell it's cervical? Well, it's got little, little bitty lushka joints here and here, or little bitty uncinate processes sticking up, which would be part of the joints of von Lushka. Here's the key, though, right there. Yeah, that's a transverse foramen. So this is actually C7. And you can't really see the, I mean, the, everything kind of melts together out here. Uh, you can kind of see maybe an anterior strut but they all kind of fuse together into a kind of a nuss here. Um, so that's a little bit strange. You can still see the pedicle right here. And you can see all the other parts. So that's a C7. All right, let's get on to the two very strange bones. We have Atlas and Axis are next. Uh, and we will talk about these again next week as well, but I wanted to, because these are so important. I want to just kind of get you started. So this is Atlas. If I turn it to the side, you can see something very strange. It has a big peg sticking up right here. That's called the dens or, or odontoid process. Dens or odontoid process. If you look at the C1 vertebrae, that's pretty weird, isn't it? What's it missing? Where's the vertebral body? It should have a body right here. Um, well, embryologically, there's the body. It was stolen by Atlas, or by Axis. If I turn it upside down, we can see it right there. Okay, and we'll, we'll get into this a little more next week. I, we can see that facet. I know some of you are going, what is that thing? It looks like a facet. It is a facet. That's the facet for the transverse ligament of Atlas. That's really important. But let's go through this. It's really kind of similar to a normal vertebrae. It has lamina on each side. It has a spinous process on each side. It's bifid. You can feel this. Right, if you go down the midline of the back of your head in the hair, right at the base where your hair stops, and you flex and extend your head a little bit, you'll feel a giant bump there. That's this. That's the spinous process of C2. That's how you find that, and you'll learn that next quarter. But here's something weird. So that is a facet of the superarticular process. So we've never seen one in that angle before. It's, it's almost horizontal. And you could call it that, but you really, the you won't see that on boards, it won't be called that. Um, the joint between C1, which is the atlas, let's bring atlas back in here. These actually go together like this. Right, so the skull, the bottom part of the skull is called the occiput. That would sit right on these joints. Those are superior articular facets of the superior articular process as well. But we don't call it that. Out of respect for this super important bone where some chiropractors believe this is this is the only bone in the spine they adjust right here. I don't many I don't know how many still believe that, but there are probably some out there. Uh, but this was the first bone that back in the day, I mean, that this, was, this was it. And so out of respect, when you're naming these joints, this one gets named first, and that's Atlas, and its name is Atlanto. So this joint would be called the Atlantoaxial joint, and there's another Atlantoaxial joint, or you could say the facet of the Atlantoaxial joint. These joints up here, would be called the atlanto-occipital joints. Atlanto-occipital joints. And we'll learn in lecture that the concavity of these things, I don't know how that comes out in the video, but these are very concave. And the more concave they are, uh, the older the person is. And that's one way that you can kind of age a skeleton is by the concavity of those. Okay, let's... So we got these weird looking atlantoaxial joints that are very vertical. If we flip it over to the back side though, uh, we can see we have normal 
kind of z-joints here. That's the facet of the inferior articular process. Facet of the inferior articular process. There's the lamina. There's the lamina. You can see the spinous process, bifid spinous process. Uh, and you can see the body. Right there, there's the body of C2. And then the body has that peg coming off the dens. There's also a big facet right here. I don't know if you can see it, but we'll go over it in class. Uh, but that's the facet for the anterior arch of atlas. Facet for the anterior arch of atlas. All right, I think we got everything there. Let's go over atlas. So weird, no body, right? We went over these superior articular facets for the superior articular processes. These are better called the atlanto-occipital joints. You can see that we have a nice, kind of a ring of bone, right? Because we don't really have a body, we just have a ring of bone. And it's made of four pieces. It's made of this piece, which is called the anterior arch of atlas. It has a bump on the top of it here. It's called the tubercle of atlas, the tubercle, the anterior tubercle of atlas. These connect to this, now this is hard to show you, but this whole chunk of bone right here where my fingers are between. Now you can see it. See all of this? That's the lateral mass of atlas. That's the left lateral mass of atlas. And this is the right lateral mass of atlas. Okay? Um, so that's the part of the ring of the, ring of the bone. So we have the anterior arch of atlas connects to the lateral masses. Off the lateral masses comes these, these articular processes here, the superior articular processes, or you could call it the facet of the superior articular process. And then we have a posterior arch that connects to the lateral masses on the backside. And we have some tubercles. I think you could see this tubercle pretty good. Uh, this doesn't have a great tubercle, but there's a little bump right here. Uh, so that's the tubercle of the posterior arch of atlas, or the posterior tubercle, you could also call it, of atlas. And what else can I show you on that? We definitely have transverse foramen still. Okay, V3 of the vertebral artery runs through there, and we'll clarify that in lecture or talk more about that in lecture. There's the other transverse foramen there. Okay, if we go to the bottom side, you can tell the bottom side because these are more flat. See, they're not as concave and they shouldn't have that hole in them. Um, so those are just uh, the inf inferior articular processes, the facets of the inferior articular processes, you could call those. Or you could also call those because they connect with, they connect with uh, axis, you could call those the part, a member of the atlantoaxial joint. Right? Remember, they connect, they connect with these guys right here, which are also pretty flat. All right, uh, what else did I want to show you? This is hard to see. Um, I can try to zoom in on this. I'm not sure how the focus would be. Let's try, though, because you got most of it. So I don't know how that's going to be, but um, there's some bumps right here, and there's a bump right there. Those are called the Collicula Atlantos. Collicula Atlantos. There's a very strong ligament that runs between those joints, and when the atlas is put in there, it traps the, or, or when the odontoid process is hooked up. You can see the bump right there and right there. It traps the atlas against the odontoid process so it can't slip forward. Uh, so those are those colliculo, colliculus atlanti, plural, are very important. Okay, the last thing I want to show you, which I probably back this off a little because I think 
I might not be in focus. So let's back it out a little. So, and those of you who were even in class probably didn't see this very good. Hopefully this will be in focus. But here's that you can see the lateral mass here and here. And right here there's a groove. I don't know how good that's going to come out. There's another groove right here. That's the groove for the, called the groove for the vertebral artery. Uh, cranial nerve one, the vertebral artery, and the vertebral veins, they're usually doubles, run through there. Uh, and so normally, like this one, there's just a groove there. There's no covering. But in a certain percentage of people, especially Eskimos, for whatever reason, let's see, where is it? Aha, here it is. So hopefully this will be in focus. So here's the lateral mass again. This is a eight, this is the top, this is the bottom. We're looking P to A. There's the posterior tubercle, posterior arch. So the groove for the vertebral artery would be right here. But look at the other side. What the heck? There's like bone in the way. Right? So that's actually an ossified posterior atlanto-occipital membrane, which ossifies and it forms a, a, a canal for it. Oops, sorry about that. Probably shook everything. Can you see my pen going right through there? And I can tip, I don't know if this could be in focus, but let's go like this. Can you see the hole there? That's not supposed to be there. You can see that on your lateral x-rays. That's called a posterior ponticle. When you get a calcification of the posterior atlanto-occipital membrane, uh, posterior ponticle, sometimes they're bilateral. Looks like it's focusing on it. Sometimes they're unilateral. Um, but that, uh, it's controversial. We'll talk about that in class, about what, what that means, uh, if anything. The hole that is created is called the arcuate foramen. Arcuate foramen. And I think we're next week, there's a lot of the same stuff next week. I'm kind of just going over it now. We look at this side, there's nothing there. All we can see is the groove for the vertebral artery. All right. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. I don't think so. So that's basically all you need to know about the cervical, cervical spine. And what I missed here, we'll get in class, and we're going to get a little bit of this next week. Here's a nice view, though, of the articular pillar. This is back to regular cervical vertebrae. Now you can see a nice articular pillar right here. The midpoint is right here, so anything above my pan, like this region, that would be the superior articular process. This would be the inferior articular process. There's still a, the midway point is still, there's a still a spondylolisthesis, or there's still a pars interarticularis here that can fracture. Pretty rare, though, but it could happen. You can see the Z joint here as well. See the Z joint? Zygapothecial joint? Right there. Uh, you can see the neural foramen or inner vertebra foramen. That big hole right there. That's where the nerve comes out. Comes right down this trough right here. The anterior ramus does, and it forms the brachial plexus, which we talked about in class today. And there's a posterior ramus that wraps back around here. Gives off a medial branch to supply this joint right there. Medial branch blocks is one treatment for patients you can't fix. Okay, anything else I want to see? We've got some clay in there for kind of a makeshift disc. You can see the uncinate processes quite nicely. All right, I think that is about it.